So uh, the final result may actually end up being quite different. So this is just a technological demonstration, so please keep that in mind. Uh, here we have your basic Cornell box scene. Uh, you see that rendered in V-Ray for about half a minute. So we have some global illumination, reflection caustics, there's an area light there. So uh, we export this scene to our GPU renderer and uh, you see that uh, rendering almost in real time. So we have a uh, full global illumination uh, with path tracing, uh, area, lights, reflections, also glossy reflections. And all of this works at nearly interactive speed. So for this particular scene we also have uh, 9 samples per pixel per frame being traced. Uh, the goal of this uh, technology, of course, is to accelerate the V-Ray RT renderer. So right now, this is a standalone application. It runs completely outside of 3ds Max. Uh, the scene is uh, exported uh, to a special format specifically for this GPU renderer. So we only support camera changes in this application. But of course, our goal is to have uh, the full functionality of the V-Ray RT renderer, where you can change materials, lights, move objects around. Uh, and edit your scene in any possible way. So, uh, skip forward to uh, the scene after it's been rendering for about three minutes. So, uh, quality is quite good, as you see. Uh, here is our next scene. It's uh, car with about 200,000 polygons. There's just a single direct light, some environment lighting. Uh, the scene is rendered with the normal V-Ray in about 16 seconds with brute force global illumination for both primary and secondary bounces. Uh, exporting this now to our uh, GPU renderer. So of course, when, when later on this exporting phase will be much, much faster, currently it's written in Max script. But uh, of course, uh, our goal is to have this working uh, pretty much as part of VRART, so you won't have to uh, wait as long for the translation phase. Starting the GPU renderer now. And uh, you can see that we get pretty much identical results to normal VRA renderer but we get them at very interactive rates. So for this scene we have uh, three samples per pixel. Uh, we also have lots of reflections. Uh, we have glossy reflections of the wheels, some refractions for the windows. And all of this is also uh, rendering in, in real time. So as you see right now, uh, this uh, render is developed on CUDA. Uh, but of course, our uh, because when we started the development, uh, OpenCL was not yet a standard. So we started our development with CUDA. We also tried Brute Plus. Uh, but our final goal is to have this implemented in OpenCL so that it will run on as many platforms as possible. So as you know, OpenCL is a standard for uh, parallel calculations. So it's going to be widely supported by many different manufacturers. And this is what we would like to use in the end. Uh, here you see the same scene, but this time with environment lighting from a single uh, HDR environment. Of course, uh, it's noisier because you need a lot more samples, so uh, there's only global illumination in this scene, three bounces of global illumination. So there are, there are no cheats for this scene, everything is calculated with brute force, there are no pre-calculations. 
no caching of global illumination or anything. Uh, for each frame, everything is calculated from scratch, except for the ray trace acceleration structures. Trying to get into the interior of the car right now. So this scenario is typically quite a quite a complex uh, set of calculations to do because everything is a closed space and all the light is coming from the outside. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of glossy surfaces, some texture maps several bounces of GI and all of this uh, you get at rendered at interactive frame rates and most importantly uh, this is the exact same result that you will get if you render the if you render your scene in the production V-Ray renderer uh, so if, you if we take a look at the task manager uh, so this is an i7 machine so it has uh, four cores four physical cores and eight logical uh, course, and you see that uh, only a very little CPU time is uh, taken, and this is mostly for capturing the video and for uh, displaying the final result. But uh, all the rendering calculations happen on the GPU. Oh. Here you see the scene after a couple of minutes. Moving to a more complicated scene, uh, the, Colossus, the Colosseum scene. Uh, this one has about uh, 800,000 triangles, so it's uh, quite a heavy scene for uh, real time ray tracing. And this is the result that you get in V ray, rendered in about uh, two minutes. It's calculated with Radiance Map, uh, Primary GI Engine, and Brute Force GI. So, uh, exporting this now to uh, our GPU renderer. Uh, this one is going to take a while, so I will pause the recording until the export is finished. Uh, of course, uh, again, this is a prototype, this is not how we imagine the system working. It will be a part of VRART where the workflow, workflow will be much, much smoother. Okay, so we get uh, similar quality for just a fraction of, of the render time. And again we have uh, three samples per pixel, we have five global illumination bounces and we still manage to get about three frames per second. So I'm going to reduce the number of bounces uh, now to show you uh, how much of a speed up we can get from that. And unfortunately uh, the video capture does not really show you uh, the full frame rate for, for this. It's actually quite a bit smoother than, than what you see in the recording. adding a few more bounces now as well. Okay, so now I've reduced the number of samples per pixel so that uh, we can get uh, somewhat faster refresh rates.
Okay, so the graphics card for, for this demonstration is uh, GeForce 285. Uh, so it's not... Uh, it is a good graphics card, but, it, but it's not uh, a very expensive...